Let's do an example where we'll use horizontal rectangles to find an area. In particular, this example. Now, this example doesn't use the phrase is horizontal rectangles or anything of the sort. So why do I say we should consider using them? Well, to use vertical rectangles, we need a top function and a bottom function. And we don't have that here. We have a bottom function, y equals two, but the top function changes. First, it's the square root of x plus two, then it's this quadratic. On the other hand, to use horizontal rectangles, we need a right function and a left function. And those we have, this quadratic is always on the right, this square root is always on the left. So we can set up an integral, a single integral of the form right minus left. If we wanted to use vertical rectangles, it would be possible but we would have to set up two integrals. We could find this area where the square root is on top and y equals two is on the bottom. And we could find this area where the quadratic is on top and y equals two is on the bottom and add them together. This lets us use one rectangle, one integral though, instead of two. Having said that, we've got some work to do if we want to use horizontal rectangles rectangles and set things up this way. Because if we're using horizontal rectangles and left and right hand functions, everything has to be in terms of y. That means our limits of integration have to be in terms of y. That means our functions have to be in terms of y. So for example, if we just took that and stuck it in there, we would be making an error. What we have to do is rewrite to this to be a function of y instead of a function of x. Which, at least in this case, isn't the hardest thing to do, but it is additional steps that have to be done.
And now that your right hand function is written in terms of y, it can go in there. Like y, and as I say, that would have been an error. Likewise, you can't just take the square root of x plus two and stick it in here. We need to have a function of y, not a function of x. So we have to do that first. And now we are still not done. We have a right-hand function. And we have got a left hand function, all in terms of y. But what about our limits of integration? They need to be in terms of y too. And what that means, remember, is that instead of our limits of integration being a left-hand and a right-hand interval, our limits of integration are going to be the bottom of the curve and the top of the curve. And one of those is easy. The bottom of the curve is already given in terms of y. It's y equals two. The top is a real mess. I'm not going to lie. Um, we can see that this topmost point is a point of intersection. This curve and this curve meet at that point. So conceptually, it's easy to see what to do. We just set this square root equal to this quadratic. However, actually doing that by hand is, well, easier said than done. I'm going to cheat and yell for help in the form of Wolfram Alpha. Y minus two squared equals was the square root of three minus y plus one. We get two solutions. However, we know that here's y equals two. Here's the point of intersection we're looking for above two. Three halves minus the square root of five over two is below two. So three must be what? we're looking for. And here then is our integral all set up. Let's see if we can take it without making any last minute 
errors. This you may be able to do in your head, or you may need to do a quick U substitution. If we let U be a three minus Y, D U is not quite um, D Y, it's negative D Y. So we'd put a negative sign in there. as well as a negative sign out here. We don't want to actually change the integral. And we get negative the integral of u to the one half du is negative two thirds u to the three halves negative two thirds three minus y to the three halves. So, hmm, where should I write this? Let's write it down here where I'll have space to work. Negative two thirds, three minus y to the three halves plus one, the antiderivative of one is y. Now here, if we let u be y minus two, du is just dy. So the integral of y minus two squared dy, it's the integral of u squared du is one third u cubed and u is y minus two. So minus one third y minus two squared. And we are evaluating from two to three. This might seem like it's going to be pretty ugly. It really isn't. If we plug three in, this turns to zero. So we get three minus, and plugging three in here is just one. One, so three minus one third. If we plug two in, this time it's this that becomes a zero, and this becomes one. Negative two thirds plus two. Let's see, three minus two is one. Negative one third minus negative two thirds is plus one third. And there's our 
area. So, um, certain the uh, problem that took a, a certain amount of time and effort, but we have brought it to a successful conclusion.